What's going on you guys? So I decided I was tempted just to combine both my rapid review videos into one big applications of derivatives that would include related rates and optimization and linear approximation and all that kind of stuff. But I thought, you know, related rates and optimization are such big problems and are kind of maybe some of the more complex calculus problems to solve. I wanted it to be its own rapid review video. So here we go. Everything you need to know, the easiest, quickest ways to do related rates in optimization problems, and I'm going to teach it to you in under 10 minutes. So without further ado, let's get started and into the video. All right, so here's our first problem. We're told that h is the diameter of some circle. So we're going to, I'm going to underline that h is the diameter of a circle. Um, and it's increasing at a rate of 0.1, I'm going to actually highlight this, it's increasing at a rate of 0.1 centimeters per second. Now we want to find the rate of change of the area of the circle, and we want to do this when h is equal to 4 centimeters. Now before we even get started, obviously we can tell that this is a related rates problem based on the key concept blue box, as we've seen in previous videos. Um, but before we even get started solving it, I think it's always smart to draw a diagram, especially if it involves some 3D shapes or something like that. It really makes it makes you be able to see the problem as a whole and make sure you're not missing anything. So I mean, a simple diagram like this it doesn't need to be pretty, but I'm just showing that obviously we have some circle diameter radius h, and we can tell uh, that over time this circle is getting bigger, and it's gotten bigger to the point that this diameter is 4 centimeters. We want to know what the area of this circle is is right now, or I guess I, not the area, but the rate of change of that area. So the way I solve um, related rates problems um, is I use this uh, strategy. You might have seen this in your physics class, but I noticed it applied really, really well to related rates problems. It's called the guess method. So the way you do it is you start by listing out your given information. You then um, switch over to your unknown variables. You take a look at your unknown variables. Um, and identify what you're trying to find. That's what this unknown step is. You're identifying what you're trying to find. You then write an equation that you need to use um, in order to relate all of your uh, variables. You then solve that equation, usually by taking the derivative, and then you finally state your answer. So let's go, let's go through all of those steps. So first off, listing at our givens. Well, we're given the rate of change of the diameter. Well, we're noting that the diameter is h. So dh dt is obviously, as we see up here, 0 0.1 centimeters per second. So that's good. Now, what are we trying to find? We're asked to find, find, that's our key word right here, the rate of change of the area of the circle. So obviously, we're wanting to find the rate of change of the area with respect to time. That's dA dt, the derivative of the area with respect to time, but specifically when h is equal to 4 centimeters. So the easy equation to use here, um, well, the area of a circle is pi. We're trying to find the, air, the derivative of the area with respect to time. So obviously, we should probably use an area function. Now, in this case, the area is equal to pi times the radius squared, but we're talking about the diameter, not the radius. Now, we know that the radius is equal to half the diameter, so I just replaced the radius with half the diameter. And if you distribute, distribute the squared through, you're going to get a, actually, technically, when you square this out, this is going to be h squared over 4, but I just pulled the h down front as you can see in this equation up here. So I get area is equal to 1 fourth times pi times the diameter squared. So now that I've got my equation, I go ahead and solve it. So I take the derivative. Now keep in mind that when I take the derivative, we can pull out any constant. So I decided to pull out the 1 fourth pi. And the derivative of h squared, keep in mind that this is um, this is not normal differentiation. This is implicit differentiation. So we'll get 2 times h. But we need to, since we're differentiating with respect to time, we have to then do a dh dt. So 2h times dh dt. So then we can go ahead. I decided to simplify this. And I didn't show this, but I multiplied this 2 times the 1 fourth out here. And that's where this 1 half magically spread it out of. But we're going to get 1 half times pi times, well, we know that h is 4 centimeters. So we plugged that in. And then we know dh dt. We know that that is 0 0.1 centimeters per second. So we also plugged that in. And if you do some simple maths without uh, multiplying by pi, without multiplying by 3.14 and getting an average, we note that the derivative of the area with respect to time when h is equal to 4 is 0 0.2 pi centimeters squared per second. So we go ahead and in our final step, we state our answer as we can see right here. So we state 
that when the diameter is four centimeters, the area of the circle is increasing. Why is it increasing? Because this answer is positive. If it was negative, we would say it's decreasing, but it's increasing at a rate of 0.2 pi centimeters squared, right? Right, because centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared. Uh, at a rate of 0.2 pi centimeters squared per second. That is related rates. Let's move on to optimization, and hopefully I might go like a minute over 10 minutes. All right, let's try to not go over 10 minutes, but forgive me if I do. Let's just get right into it. We're given the graph of y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. It's obviously enclosing some region um, in the first quadrant. This is going to be key, possibly, in the first quadrant. So we only have to deal with the first quadrant. So some rectangle in the enclosed region, it's going to have a vertex at the origin, and its opposite vertex is going to be on the graph of y equals negative 1 half x squared plus 2. We're asked to find the dimensions of the rectangle so that the area is a maximum. So we're asked to maximize the area. So obviously, based on the key concept box, this is an optimization problem, or you might also know this as an applied max or min problem. Uh, either, uh, either name uh, satisfies. So your teacher might call it an applied max or min, or your teacher might call it an optimization problem. Same type of problem. Both of them, you should start out by drawing a diagram. So here, um, obviously, these areas, regions don't matter. We're just looking at the first quadrant. Obviously, we've got one vertex at the origin, and the opposite vertex is on the graph. So this is just the general case for what this would look like. Next up, you're going to want to find an equation that's going to relate the variables you're trying to find. Now, obviously, we're trying to... Ideally, this equation should also... It, it should primarily involve what you're trying to maximize or minimize. So in this case, we are trying to maximize area. So I'm going to use an area equation. Now, area of a rectangle is the same thing as length times width. But here's the problem. So when we go to take the derivative, it's not going to be very nice because we have two different variables. We've got a y and we've got an x. So that's not super helpful. So what I, what I did is I went and rearranged and got x by itself. And the way I did that is I knew that y, this output, right, this is some point x, y right here, right? This is some point p that has coordinates x and y. And this y coordinate is going to be whatever I get when I plug in x. So since this y coordinate is going to be whatever I get when I plug x into that equation, I was able to substitute y for that equation, and that simplified to negative 1 half x squared plus 2x. Keep in mind that the domain is from 0 to 4. Why? We're only in the first quadrant, so we do not care about any negative numbers. And as we can see, this is a downward sloping line, so it's going to end up going into the negative quadrant down here at some point, but we don't care about that. We only care when it's in the first quadrant, and so it's obviously bounded by 0. And watch when we plug in 4. If we plug in 4, we're going to get negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is 0. Anything bigger than 4, this will be in the negative quadrant. So the domain is only from 0 to 4 so that we can contain ourselves in the x-axis. That's important so we can make sure we find the absolute max, the absolute min. Next up, we're going to take the derivative. The derivative of this is pretty simple. It's simply just... Uh, I think I did something wrong here. Hold up. No, I didn't. This was just a simple power rule. So 2 times negative 1 half is negative x. And the derivative of 2x is simply just 2. So that's the derivative. And then from here on out, it's just going to be like what we did in the last rapid review video. In the last unit, we're just going to do find the absolute maximum. So obviously, we're going to need to find critical points. Obviously, there's a critical point at x equals 2. The next step, you can choose to use the first derivative test or the second derivative test. I'm not going to go over what those are. There are other videos I have that go over those. But I'm just going to say, for the sake of this problem, it was easier to do the second derivative because I noticed if I took the second derivative of this, I just simply got negative 1, which means that the area function is always concave down, meaning that x equals negative 2. That critical point had to be a relative maximum. Now remember, when you find a relative maximum, that, that's a relative maximum. An absolute maximum is the absolute biggest value. And the absolute max can happen at a critical point, or it can happen, or sorry, it, it can happen at critical points and relative maxes and mins, or it can happen at end points. So you have to check the end points and plug in the outputs and see which gives you the biggest output. So you plug it into the area function. You, but notice that when you plug in 0 and 4, you just get 0, meaning that that relative max you found is the absolute max. 
Now, a lot of students would stop here and say, yep, I found the answer. The, the maximum area seems to be two. No, that's not the answer. Remember, go back to the problem. We're asked to find the dimensions of the rectangle. So now we have to go find the dimensions of the rectangle. Well, obviously, we just plugged in a 2 for x. So obviously, we know that the length is 2. But we need to know the width. And what is the width? Well, remember, earlier, we said that the width was whatever you get when you plug in x into this equation. So when you plug in x into this equation, you get 1. So the dimensions of the rectangle that will maximize the rectangle's area are two units of length and one unit of width. That is applied maximum problems or optimization problems. Just about 30 seconds over, a little bit over, but those are two big concepts that I think it was worth taking the extra time to make sure I uh, explained those concepts. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you find these videos helpful, please subscribe. It tells YouTube, hey, this guy makes great content, and then my con content can land in the hands of people who actually uh, want this help and are looking for easy and quick ways to learn calculus. So thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely leave a like. Comment what other videos you guys want me to make. Love talking to you guys in the comments. Tell me how great of a job I'm doing or what you want me to improve on. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next rapid review video. Catch you guys then.